Well, hello everyone, and welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about a chemical concept known as the mole. Now, of course, I'm not referring to that cute little blind furry creature that burrows below the earth, but, but to a chemical concept that refers to a huge number of particles. Now, the reason we need such a huge number of particles is because atoms are so ridiculously small. For example, if you just had one hydrogen atom, it would only weigh about 1.673 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. That is a crazy small number. So for example, if you were to walk into a typical chemical lab, you might see an analytical balance like this. Now this balance is considered to be very precise because it measures out to four decimal places. So you could measure masses on this as small as 0 0.0001 grams or 10 thousandths of a gram, which is pretty small. But that's not even close to getting you down to the ability to measure an atom. If I want to measure a hydrogen atom, I would need 0 0.23 zeros, 1, 6, 7, 3 grams. So if you want to be able to measure atoms on balances in the real world, we need a crazy number of them, just a huge amount. And that huge number, we define it as the mole. So 1 mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Now this sort of odd looking number is called Avogadro's number and it's named for this sexy Italian gentleman over here. So Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And that's the number of particles as there are in one mole of anything. Now 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, I think you'll agree is kind of an odd number. So where does that come from? Well it comes from the number of particles as there are in 12 grams of carbon 12. As you might recall from our lesson on atomic masses, the masses on the periodic table are all based around carbon-12. So one carbon-12 atom was defined to have a mass of exactly 12 AMU. So when they wanted to measure things in grams on the periodic table, they went back to carbon-12 and they said, well, how many carbon-12 atoms would there be in exactly 12 grams? And when they calculated that, they got Avogadro's number. So this number is the number of particles in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, which we call the mole. Now the mole is a huge number. You can't quite believe how big that number is. For example, if I was gonna to try to write that out, I would need to write 6022 and then another 20 zeros after it. So there's 10 zeros. So that's how big a mole is. So this is how many particles would be in 12 grams of carbon-12. This is a huge number. But as huge as that number is, you could hold that many particles really easily in your hand because atoms are so small. In fact, it's about the number of particles as there are in 20 pennies if they were made of pure copper. So just think about that for a second. If you were holding 20 pure copper pennies in your hand, you would be holding Avogadro's number of particles in your hand. So atoms are really ridiculously small, which is why we need a huge number to count them. Now this number is gargantuan. If you're gonna to try to count it, let's say you had 10,000 people and they began trying to count Avogadro's number. If they were gonna count it at a rate of 100 numbers every minute, so they're counting pretty quick, like one, two, three, four, five, six, it would take them over a trillion years to count Avogadro's number one time. Another way to think about how many particles this is, so if I had a mole copper atoms and suddenly those teeny tiny atoms grew to be just as big as marbles, which still aren't very big, well that number of marbles would cover the earth over 50 miles deep. <laughs> and one last analogy just to kind of show you how big the mole is. A regular glass of water has about 10 moles. So if you were to try to figure out how many particles there would be in this glass of water, there would be more particles in your hand in that glass of water than there are grains of sand in the entire Sahara Desert that covers North Africa. So think about that for a second. In your glass of water, you're holding more particles than there are grains of sand in the entire Sahara Desert. Now again, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd of whatever it is you're dealing with. Just like one dozen is 12 of anything you're dealing with, one mole is Avogadro's number of anything. So it could be atoms, 
It could be molecules, it could be ions or formula units or electrons or protons, whatever you want, but it could be anything. It could be donuts or puppies or TVs or cars or anything. It doesn't matter. So one mole of any kind of a substance has Avogadro's number of particles in it. So I'll show you how you use this in a calculation. So how many atoms are in 42.67 moles of copper? So 42.67 moles of copper. So how many particles are in a mole of copper? Well, we know Avogadro's number, one mole of anything, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, whatever we're after. Well, just like with any unit conversion, for example, one foot equals 12 inches. I could always flip it either way. I could write one mole over Avogadro's number, or I could write Avogadro's number over a mole. Well, in our case, with this unit conversion, we're trying to get rid of moles, so moles will go on the bottom. So one mole of copper is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of copper, and a particle of copper is called an atom, so atoms. So when I multiply this out, I got four sig figs here. Avogadro's number, again, was measured, so that's four sig figs. My answer would have four sig figs. And I got 2.570 times 10 to the 25th atoms. So that's how many particles are in 42.67 moles of copper. How about how many molecules are there in 7.32 moles of sulfur dioxide? So 7.32 moles sulfur dioxide, we learned in our lesson on naming molecular compounds, is SO2. Well, again, I want moles to cancel, so I'm going to put moles in the bottom. So one mole of SO2 has Avogadro's number of particles in it. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And what's the smallest particle of a molecular compound? Well, that's a molecule. So there's that many molecules in a mole of sulfur dioxide. So we cancel out our moles. This has three sig figs. This has four sig figs. So our answer will have three sig figs. That'd be 4.41 times 10 to the 24th molecules. Okay, so I've shown you how to go from moles to particles. Well, now let's go the other way. Let's turn particles into moles. So how many moles of silver is 8.46 times 10 to the 24th atoms of silver? So now I'm going from atoms into moles. So 8.46 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And I want to go to moles. So in this case, I want particles to cancel. So I got to put Avogadro's number on the bottom, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And our particles for silver are atoms. That's how many are in one mole of silver. So atoms would cancel. We got three sig figs here. We got four sig figs here. So our answer would have to have three. So it'd be 14.0 moles of silver. Okay, let's try one more. How many moles of water is 5.02 times 10 to the 18th molecules of water? So 5.02 times 10 to the 18th molecules. I wanna know how many moles that is. So again, I'm turning particles into moles. So the particles has to go on bottom, which means Avogadro's number has to go on the bottom, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and we're dealing with molecules. And that's a mole of water. So molecules will cancel. This one's gonna have three sig figs also, so I got 8.34 times 10 to the negative sixth moles of water. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on the mole. In our next lesson, we're going to cover how to turn moles into mass. So I hope you'll join us for that lesson. And we'll see you next time here on GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.